Good people, we have three stories for you here today, and we're going to link all three articles in the episode notes down below in the description box. The first one from AT&T, another is about smartphone sales, and then the third one about C-band and capacitive mobile networking. Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, this is the big thing, it's all about mid-band, so that's a cool article too. We'll take a look at all three. Let's start first with the AT&T news. This is an update on what AT&T is doing in innovation with their cows. And I'm not talking about the ones that moo. I'm talking about what are referred to as cells on wheels. Uh, They're typically known as just like mobile cell spots, like mobile towers, I suppose. Uh, But instead of them being anchored as like monopoles and and on street lights and whatever else, or on rooftops, uh, these are actually flown on drones. All right. So 5G drones providing mobile connectivity. And in this particular testing, It was done in rural Missouri. The device is known as a flying cell on wheels or flying cow. Using drones makes a lot of sense. They're very versatile. They're very nimble. They can get in very small places in between thin, you know, segments of streets and, you know, getting it out in a field in the middle of nowhere where there's no road makes total sense. So you could see like in an emergency flying some emergency drones or possibly offering some short term relief for large gatherings and sporting events, like stated here in this article. So using flying cows seems like a win-win situation, in my estimation. It said here that the flight location only had an intermittent weak LT signal, and AT&T sent over this flying cow, and it says here, as high as 300 feet, transmitting what Hunt said was a strong 5G signal that covered approximately 10 square miles. Holy cow. (laughs) Literally, holy cow. 10 square miles from a drone is pretty phenomenal. All right, that's a lot of space for just this little thing that you could see pictured here on the screen. You guys see the field, you see the cows, the actual like animals, all right, and and the pasture and stuff and some trees. And then there's the drone. That's pretty cool. This is a very nice, unique uh, application for 5G, obviously. Uh, The carrier pointed to two other drone projects that they're working on, BVLOS or Beyond Visual Line of Sight Flight Operations, aims to enable drones to be piloted from remote locations. And then what they have is uh, a thing called RoboDogs, aims to enable drones to be used in inaccessible or high-risk scenarios such as search, rescue, and bomb disablement. So you guys can see that this is a project that AT&T has probably been working on for several years. Now as the technology has matured and has gotten more capable, now we can start putting some networking to it. And who knows, sky's the limit when it comes to these types of applications. Of course, we leverage them in a very situational way, but things do happen. You could see this across a lot of different applications. Very cool here from AT&T. All right, next. This is a forecast article. All right, link is in the description. Smartphone shipments to decline, and that is going to continue. Shipments of smartphones are expected to decline 3.5% to 1.31 billion units this year, according to the latest International Data Corporation Worldwide Quarterly Mobile Phone Tracker Forecast. All right, a decline of 3.5% probably means that people are not upgrading their phones as frequently. Phones have gotten pretty good. Mid-range phones have gotten pretty good. Budget phones have gotten much better. I would actually argue that budget phones have improved the most. Flagship phones, the really expensive ones like iPhones, they incrementally update they don't really get much better so i think those segments considering that those phones are kind of not really worth upgrading year to year probably part of the reason why a lot of people are you know considering holding on to a device for an extra year possibly or even two so typically you know the conversation 10 years ago was update your phone every year because you would be getting in a much better phone each year but now things kind of you know, there's not really much to upgrade to. The cameras from year to year don't matter too much. The cellular might not matter so much. Maybe every couple of years. Some people are doing every three. It says here that 5G devices will grow 25.5% year over year, uh, accounting for 53% of the new shipments. That number is probably going to also increase like a year from now. So that'll continue to happen. Uh, but these forecasts essentially could be A, people upgrading less, and I also think about supply shortages as well. Uh, And it's not really shortage. It's just, you know, the the materials for certain things. And then also, you got to remember, most of these devices are built in certain countries that are impacted heavily by 
you know, the pandemic still to a, to a large extent. So producing them and getting people to work has been a challenge in a lot of places. So I would assume that the volume of production is way down. And that's probably going to manifest itself and show itself in this type of a shipping thing. So the, you're still going to be able to buy a phone if you want one. Uh, there'll probably be, you know, an extra delay of a week, two weeks, or even a month in which you won't receive it. But demand's also probably going to be down a little bit, in my opinion. So I think that blend of those couple of factors probably means we're going to see a small drop in smartphone sales this year. So I agree. If that's the forecast, I don't see how, you know, that that's that outlandish. I think that's probably going to be accurate. What do you guys think? Comment down below. All right. Last story of the day. This one is from Ookla, also from the telecompetitor. C-band becoming a factor in mobile speed race. All right. This was actually from yesterday. It says here that the analysis from Ookla speed test, you guys know about the testing application. Their data from the first quarter of the year provides good news for each of the big three mobile carriers. It also notes that C-band may upset the status quo in the not so distant future. T-Mobile is the company that has the fastest 5G median speed at 191 megabits per second. They are far beyond Verizon, who's coming in at 107 megabits per second. So it's not really close, right? It's almost double. Though it's significantly behind T-Mobile, AT&T also saw speed gains in its C-band deployment. So the company's net postpaid additions beat expectations. at and is adding a lot of customers, so they're getting relief at the perfect time. They've been growing a lot of new customers coming from probably like Sprint Churn at T-Mobile, as well as maybe from Verizon. Who knows? Maybe also from T-Mobile. So if they're growing, you know, they need that capacity and they need that 5G coverage. So they're doing their part in upgrading the network. Verizon's good news is probably on deck, according to Ookla. The expected continuation of inflation will force mobile carriers to make a choice before the release of more C-band spectrum at the end of the year. They will either absorb the additional costs or raise prices. AT&T, Ookla says, has decided to raise rates, which could benefit Verizon. Well, they're both kind of raising prices. So I don't, I see that both kind of like as a push. Anyways, U.S. postpaid net additions mentioned here. You will see that the growth leader has been T-Mobile pretty much every step of the way up until recently. If you look at the year for 2021, and actually this kind of goes back to Q4 or Q3 2020, you'll see where AT&T has kind of closed the gap and they're right there with T-Mobile. And one could argue that if T-Mobile wasn't doing free lines, we're probably looking at a different story here, right? So anyways, if you look at 2021, it's AT&T's year for sure. And Probably in the near term, I think T-Mobile is going to probably retake the growth crown because, you know, AT&T doesn't seem to be running the same aggressive promotions as they once were. And now with Sprint Churn kind of settling at T-Mobile, it's just probably not going to be the case. But the companies need C-Band to be built out and it's already starting to make a difference. So not only are the companies growing that are building out these networks, right, people are also enjoying more capacitive network experience. We're also seeing the T-Mobile home internet, the Verizon home internet starting to pace as well. More and more people on that service and the network's still getting faster. So no concerns about congestion really on the horizon. What do you guys think about C-band becoming a factor? What do you think about the net ad situation, how that impacts that build? There's more spectrum coming. I'm not too worried about it. I think they'll be fine. They just got to densify, kick up the backhaul and just get those upgrades going. They should be fine as the channels widen. More bandwidth on the C-band side. Tell me about the smartphone shipment declines and the AT&T flying cow. Very cool there. Comment down below. You all the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notifications. Never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter and my Patreon page. Support us there and get early access to content and exclusives not found anywhere else. And all business inquiries can be sent to the Gmail address in the description box. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next video. Peace.